we're talking about start with why talking a little bit about book club if you don't know we've started the amazon reseller book club you can find out more about that at fulltimefba.com forward slash book club and we are starting with the book start with why and this book has been really awesome i'm going to be scoping today about chapters one through three some things that really stood out to me and let's get this thing started how many out there have read uh, some of this yes, already. You've got your start with why, you've started reading it. Um, I'm, I just started chapter three earlier and it's been really good. I hope that you are, uh, are starting to read it. We're going to go through, read about uh, three, two to three, three to four chapters a week. And um, all right, so you're on page 92. That's good. Um, listen to on audio. Yes, I've got the audio version and the written version, uh, and here's the reason why. Audio version, I like to listen to when I work out. The 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 printed version, you know, I like to uh, I like to underline. So um, I don't know about you. I've I've underlined a lot of stuff in the book that's really good, and um, it's good stuff. So today we're gonna be talking about chapters one, two, and three. If you've read it, awesome. If you're already further down the road, that's great too. If you haven't started it yet, maybe this will be a little. A teaser that will get you started with the book because I know one of the reasons why we all join a book club is to give us a little more accountability to read the book and there's still plenty of time to uh, to read this to get caught up um, I know we're really busy and we've got a lot of stuff going on but this is a, a book that's really changed a lot of people's lives and have really helped people avoid burnout and help people connect with why they're doing what they're doing so uh as we get started with this, the, the subtitle is, is is how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. And I don't know if you about you, but I don't, if you thought this was like an Amazon FBA book and start with why, and you're like, why is this talking about leaders taking action? And is it, you know, is this a leadership book? Uh, do I really need to be reading this? Because I want to learn about my Amazon FBA business. And this is about leadership. Well, who's the number one person you need to be leading? That's right, you. You need to be leading yourself. You need to be a better leader of yourself. And one of the best ways to lead yourself is to connect with your why. So I want to read a few little passages um, from the book that stood out to me and then tell you about how I kind of implement that or or how what I've learned from that um, and how it applies to my Amazon FBA business. So from chapter one, Assume You Know is the, chap is the title of chapter one. It says, the point is we make assumptions. We make assumptions about the world around us based on sometimes incomplete or false information. I even just think about sourcing. A lot of us sometimes make sourcing decisions based on incomplete or false information. I mean, one of the best ways to make better sourcing decisions is to have as much information as possible. Now, you can get to a point where there's, you know, what's what's the phrase, the paralysis of analysis where you just have so much information that you just end up not doing anything because there's too much. So you can go overboard with it, but you don't want to make decisions with your Amazon FBA business with what you're sourcing, with the what you're deciding to do next, based on assumptions. You want to know what what you're, you're doing. This is important because our behavior is affected by our assumptions of our perceived truths. We make decisions based on what we think we know. It wasn't too long ago that the majority of the world thought that the world was flat. And that perceived thought stopped people and impacted their behavior. You know, they thought the world was flat, so they didn't travel too far because they were afraid they're going to fall off the edge. But once they realized the world was round, yes, it's round. The world is round. They realized they can just they can keep going and be safe, and they started to explore, and it totally changed the world. The correction of a simple false assumption moved the human race forward. Now, consider how decisions are made. Do we really in sales on Amazon, whether it's having thousands and thousands of items of inventory, whether it's owning your own house, being debt free, whether it's running your own business successfully, whatever your definition of success, we don't ever really understand why people are successful or why we are successful or not successful and until we start to focus on our why and realize and, and just really kind of whittle it down. Because how we go about achieving our goals is very similar. Some of us just wing it and some of us try to gather at least some data so that we can make educated decisions. Sometimes gathering the process is formal, like, you know, just like looking on an app and doing the camel, camel, camel research and figuring out stuff. It's some formal research and some of it is is not so formal like being like 
this is a Barbie. This is Mattel. This is a, you know, I think this is going to, you know, it's informal. And sometimes the decisions that we make are good and sometimes they're bad. All we know, however, is that not all decisions work out to be the right ones regardless of the information that we collect. Whatever the result, we make decisions based on perception of the world that may not, in fact, be completely accurate. Now, this can kind of be kind of scary because we've got a lot of important, informa uh, important decisions to make in our Amazon FBA business. It's important to be like, do I branch out to a new category? Do I buy this $100 item and hope I can double my money on it? Do I spend, you know, do I buy 50 of this one item or is it not a good idea to buy 50? You know, is it, am I going too deep? There's a lot of decisions to make and, and sometimes we just have to do it and try it and see. Now, what does this have to do with our why? Well, let's, let's get back to this and see. Not only bad decisions are made on false assumptions, sometimes we do things right and we think we know why, but do we really? The result went way better than what you thought. And just because it went well doesn't mean you can always repeat it over and over again. And so a lot of times we're like, you know what? I went to the store. I bought a bunch of stuff. I had a cart. It was overflowing. I killed it. And, I'm, and it ends up not working out. Other times you do that and it ends up working out really well. So here is the question. How can we ensure that all of our decisions yield the best results for reasons that are fully within our control? Logic dictates that the more information and data are key, and that's exactly what we do. We read books, we attend conferences, we listen to podcasts, we watch Periscopes, we watch YouTube videos, we watch all this type, we buy eBooks. I'm adding to this, obviously. Um, all with the purpose of finding out more so we can figure out how to do or act. The problem is we've all been in situations where we have all the correct information and get lots of good advice, but still things don't go right. Or maybe the impact lasted only a short time or something happened that we could not foresee. And to me, uh, some people might look at that and go, great, you have all the data in the world and, and you still can make mistakes? Man, what kind of business is this? Well, it's just, it's life. To me, this, this what I just read is freeing because it allows you, the it's okay to fail. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to learn from those mistakes. It's okay to have all the right information in front of you, make a decision on what you're buying, make a decision on what you're sourcing, make a decision on if you need to lower your your price. But you you have that freedom to learn. You have the freedom to be able to take those mistakes and, and, and it's okay. Now mistakes are not fun, but you want to make the mistakes that are really easy, not the mistakes that are really hard that are really going to cost you. You know, like, you know, I think about, um, uh, you know, bringing up a kid and, and raising a child. There are cert certain times I want my child to make a mistake at home when he's in a safe environment where he can be protected so that later in life he doesn't make that same mistake where there might be, you know, e e just consequences that affect the rest of his life. I want him to make the little mistakes early so that he can be saved from making the bigger mistakes later. And so this is, is just, it just gives you that freedom. And understanding that helps you connect with your why. And we'll go out talking talk again about your why in just a minute because this, this first couple chapters is setting up towards discussing your why. And there's times where we had no data when we choose to ignore the advice or information at hand and we just went with our gut and things worked out just fine. Sometimes even better than expected. This dance between gut and rational decision making pretty much covers how we conduct business and even our lives. And it's true. A lot of times, you know what, I'm, you, you, you come across an item in a store and you're like, should I get it? I don't know. I got a bad feeling about this. And you walk away and you know what, that's probably good. Or you're like, man, I got a good feeling about this. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But the fact that sometimes it doesn't, it's, it just, that's just really freeing knowing that that's, that's okay. All right, let's talk a little bit about price because Price is an important part of our Amazon FBA business. And this is in Chapter 2, Carrots and Sticks. And there's a section on price. It's, and it says, Most companies are reluctant to play the price game, but they do so because they know it's effective. In fact, the temptation can be sometimes overwhelming. There are few professional services that, when faced with an opportunity to land a big piece of business, haven't just dropped their price to make the deal happen. No matter how rationalize it, it how, no matter how they rationalize it to themselves, or their clients, price is a highly effective manipulation. Drop your prices low enough and people will buy. Boy, I know people 
with long-term storage fees coming up, you're like, hey, I need to drop my prices. I need to get rid of it. I need to, I need to lower my prices so people will buy. But is the, that price game the right thing to do? We've done a, a video about this in the past. You can find it on catch.me forward slash full-time FBA. Catch with a K, K-A-T-C-H. We talked about opportunity cost. We talked about repricing. And, and is, that the right, is that the right thing to do to, to play the price game? So this is drop your low, price low enough, people will buy from you. We see it um, a lot of times at retail stores when things are priced to move. You know, drop the price low enough and the shelves will quickly clear. But the price game can pay a, a big cost. There's a lot of people out there who brag about their sales numbers, but you don't know their ROI. You know what? They, they, could have, they could lower their prices and not get much ROI just to be able to tell people they made six figures. And, and you know what? You don't know their, their ROI. You don't know the time and energy that they've put into uh, investing into their, um, their inventory. And sometimes play, playing the price game can be very dangerous. And we, and we can start playing the price game when we lose our why. And again, we'll talk about what our why is in just a second. Um, and there's a part in here that, that reminds me of the race to the bottom. Most of you have heard that term, the race to the bottom, where someone's like, I'm pricing mine at $19.99. I'll price it $19.98, $19.95, $19.90, $18.70, and it's the race to the bottom. The only people that, there's no one who wins the race to the bottom. So if you don't involve yourself in the race, you're, you're, you're not going to win. No one wants to win the race to the bottom. But there's a part in here that says, and so the downward spiral of price addiction sets in. You don't want to be addicted to lowering your price just to get the next sale. Now, there's sometimes when that's the right thing to do. When you look on Camel, 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 and you see this price, this item is not going to sell that much, I've got a lot in stock, and I just need to get it to move, it's not going to go at the price I want it to, and Camel shows me that, then it's okay to do that. But there's other times where you're just like, oh, I, 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 you know, I, I just, I, everyone else is lowering their price, I'm going to do it too. Don't play that game. Um, so that's some stuff about price from this book that really stood out to me. There's a lot I'd like to share with you about this. I'm just kind of picking out some of the, the big things that really, really stand out to me in this. Um, if, if, be sure you read the, the, the little section about novelty, also known as innovation. That's, that's something that really stood out to me. There's a part in this book that says, As, long, as good as a short-term high may feel, short-term highs, short, decisions based on short-term impact, can have a um, really bad impact on the long-term health of your business. So... Think about your business. If the only thing you're about is getting your disbursement up higher and higher and higher at, and, and you're killing your margins and you're killing your return on investment, that's not a sustainable business. And so even though you're like, okay, I made an awesome, I had an awesome disbursement. Well, guess what? You like cut your return on inventory, return on investment in half. You lowered your profit potential for the future just so you can get a big disbursement right now. And it's it's something you don't want to be tempted to do. Now, there's times in life when there's there might be an emergency and you might need to do that. But if you're wanting to think about long-term success of your business, there's a lot of times with when it regards to price, we need to be patient. We need to make better decisions. Y'all, y'all hear me talk about the website Camel, Camel, Camel all the time. I, I might get a tattoo of three camels one day um, on my heel. I don't know where I put it. Anyway, um, but... I love camel, 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 and it's just you know there that it, it can show you if you're going to make a good decision about price and his and and sales velocity. And so yes, you need to be okay with slow growth. A lot of people get into Amazon FBA because they think they can make fast money, and there's there's certain ways that you can do fast money uh, that are kind of cutting the rules and um, and not making good decisions. But really, it's like a snowball. And I've talked about this before, the snowball. It starts, and it starts to, to, to go. It starts, all snowballs start slowly. But once they get bigger and bigger and bigger and down the hill and gain that momentum, then, then there's really rapid growth. You know, it takes time. The whole Amazon FBA business, if you're wanting to, to make it a full-time income, um, then it's, it's a crock pot, not a microwave. You have to look at it like a crock pot where it's cooking all day, and at the end of the day, it's awesome. It's not a microwave where you can just zap it. Selling on Amazon FBA, you have to look at it like a marathon. A marathon you need to train for before it even starts, and a marathon that you need to pace yourself and take it a little bit at a time. 
It's a crock pot, not a microwave. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And I've talked about Camel Camel a lot. There's no Camel 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 app, but you can use your browser on your phone to save Camel Camel Camel, a quick little bookmark on your phone to Camel 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 to have access to that. Or if you're using Profit Bandit or Scoutify or Scam Power, there's ways that you can access Profit, uh, Camel 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 through those apps. Most people start on the outside and they think about what I need to do. What I need to do is buy this course. What I need to do is buy inventory. What I need to do is, is learn how to do a new category. Okay, how am I going to do it? Okay, I'm, I'm going to do it by uh, going to Walmart and looking in their clearance section. I'm going to go to thrift stores. I'm going to apply for a new category. Okay, now why am I doing it? Well, I'm doing it because I want to make money. I'm doing it because... And you, most people end up forgetting the why. Well, we need to start... We need to start with why. I mean, hello, that's the whole book. Start with why. Think about why you want to be in business for yourself. Why you want to be, uh, uh, you know, make money either part-time or full-time with Amazon FBA. Start with why. What is your why? Is it your why is the freedom that working for yourself provides? Is your why your family so that you can, you know, make the income to support your family or to make the income to spend more time with your family? I love that working on with Amazon FBA gives me the freedom to spend more time with my kids, to be able to be with them more. Of the time. I'm, you know, my dad, he he went to work really early in the morning. He left work around five, got home around six. I got to hang out with him in the evenings and the weekends. And he was he, he's an awesome dad. And I got to spend a lot of time with him on the weekends and and sometime in the evenings. But you know, I, I love that Amazon, with Amazon FBA, I'm working from home and I can uh, have that opportunity. To spend more time with my kids and uh and i think you know they they see that as a good thing as well but what is your why it's going to be different for everybody some people's why is the independence of being your own boss some people's why is you know what i've got this mortgage and i want to pay it down uh to be mortgage free to be debt free and and the freedom that being debt free provides <clears throat> so we all know the what and the how are usually pretty easy. And if you don't know the what or the how, most likely you can go to Google and find it out. You know, I mean, the number one thing searched on Google is the phrase how to. And then the second one is, the second most um, searched question is what is. But why needs to, we need to start with why. Why? Very few people can completely articulate and clearly articulate why they do what they do. When I say why, I don't mean to make money. That's a result. By why, I mean what is your purpose? What is your cause? What is your belief? Why does your business exist? Why do you get out of bed every morning? Why should anybody care? And your why is different. And in a future video, I'll be talking about my why. But this is something I want you to be meditating on. What is your why? Why do you do this? And and think about it. If you need to write it down, if you need to doodle it, if you need to talk with a friend. A lot of people just think, you know, I'm going to do Amazon FBA because it's a quick way to make money. And for some people, that is. And I really think that if that's your why, then you're going to burn out of this business and you're not going to be able to really connect, grow roots, and be able to build a long-term, long-lasting business. If your why is all about money, most likely, then this is just, you know, the 15th thing that you've tried to make money that hasn't worked for you. And when this one doesn't work, you're going to be jumping to the next thing. But if you really want to find long-lasting success, read, start with why, think about what your why is, and find a way to connect with that. And we'll talk more about that in future videos. Speaking of future videos, um, we're, we're looking into more interactive um, platforms for us to do the book club so that it's not just me talking, but I can bring you guys on and we can have conversations. You can read clips uh, that worked out for you. Um, and so we're going to be working on that for future book clubs. Um, but for today, this is just a, for us to get started, uh, chapters one, two, and three. And uh, and I hope it's been something that's been beneficial for you. Uh, if you want the quick and easy links to be able to get the book, and if you're not on the book club mailing list yet, go to fulltimefba.com forward slash book club. 
um, and you sign up for the book club and you'll get an email the the links to start with why and how you know all the places that you can get it you can also post your uh, insights on the Facebook group use hashtag book club when you're on Facebook in the in the full-time FBA Facebook group if you go to fulltime fba.com forward slash Facebook that takes you to our full-time FBA Facebook group page if you're not a member there just join we've we've had a lot of different people uh, probably about 20 or 30 posts already uh, about book club using the hashtag book club you know we do it that way so if anybody just wants to look at book club information on the full-time FBA Facebook page they can just go there and search hashtag book club and see what everyone else is talking about it but everyone there's a lot of people really excited about it people are reading it people are listening to it uh, on their Kindles, they've got the physical versions, the audio. Um, it's been really good, and, and I just encourage you not to give up, to keep reading, and we'll keep talking about this in the future. So that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a little thumbs up below. That would be really cool. And if you have a comment or a question, you can do that below too. Any of the links that we talked about during this video, you can find that in the description below, and it will take you right where you need to go. If you want to be sure you don't miss out on any of the future videos, be sure you subscribe to this channel and you'll be able to get notifications when our new videos are posted so you don't miss out on any Amazon FBA information. And if you want to learn more about me and the website, come to fulltimefba.com, where as always, it's my goal to give you the strategies, the tools, and the confidence you need to turn part-time hours into a full-time income with Amazon. Well, that's all for today. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.